Welcome to the Prison Professors Podcast. My co-founders are Sean Hopwood and Justin Paperni. My name is Michael Santos. Members of our team served lengthy terms in prison and we came back successfully. We create podcasts to show how strategies in prison can lead to success. Visit us at prisonprofessors.com to learn more. Welcome back to Prison Professors. I am continuing this awesome interview with Jesse Barnes. I don't know if you heard his interview yesterday, uh, but if you didn't, I encourage you to turn into yesterday's interview where you can hear about Jesse's experience of going to prison as a, as a teenager for first degree murder with a multiple decade sentence of 30 years, how he went in there with a mindset to adjust to the prison and forget about the world outside, resulted in him facing some significant challenges, but then he saw the light, literally. He was inside of a shoe cell where he was serving a multi-year sentence in the segregated housing unit, but he saw a window and through that window brought him hope. The light came in, he changed his mindset, he came out, and today we're going to hear about what it was like when he came to the other end of the journey when he got out of prison. First of all, Jesse, why don't you tell us a little bit about how it was that you got out of prison? What happened after you finished those college courses and changed your mindset after you were two decades into your prison term? How did you eventually get out? Okay, uh, after I changed my mindset, I started getting in trouble less and less, I should say. And I would love to say that the parole board was <laughs> really receptive to that. But unfortunately, they weren't. And a lot of times, especially in the state of Texas, they don't care about the first time you come up, they don't really care about a lot of stuff that you've accomplished while you were in prison. And I learned that the hard way. But that didn't deter me. Uh, when I first came up, uh, I was denied parole my first time. I was denied parole my second time. In fact, my second time, they gave me parole, then rescinded the decision, no fault of my own, which was incredibly, incredibly challenging for me. Uh, and then the third time, I was able to, to get out of prison through parole. So, so you got out of prison after 21 years. Yes. What was it like coming back to society? How old were you? And what uh, it was a whole new set of challenges. We have this idea, Michael, and I know you know this, when you're in prison that getting out of prison is salvation. You know, just all you're trying to do is get out of prison, then life's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. And initially it is. And when I first got out, the world was completely changed. When I went in, people had, I had pager. <laughs> there was no such thing as a cell phone when I went to prison. Technology was at advance by leaps and bounds. So I was, when I first got out, I was pretty much lost. Fortunately, I did have a few family members who were there for me. I had my brother and a couple of siblings who were there for me, which made it a lot easier. Uh, they were there for moral support and a little bit of financial, if, if they could, whatever they can do. And so it was a, it was really, really a confusing time for me. It was both, uh, I, I loved it, but it was so challenging on, I guess, a lot of different levels. For me, the biggest thing was, I guess, technology, but also getting, I was faced with this new idea about getting a job and credit. I'd never used credit in my life. I never even had a driver's license. I went in when I was 17, had a car, but never, back then, I didn't care about all that. So here, I, I got out when, <laughs> I, I got out of prison in my 30s, my late 30s, and never even had a driver's license. So it was humiliating to me in a lot of ways. I'm sitting with 16 year olds getting my driver's license, but I, I made the decision that it doesn't matter what it is, how humiliating it's going to be. Uh, I'm going to do it. Whatever job that I can find when I first get out of prison, I was going to do it regardless of, I, I wasn't going to make decent money. It was definitely going to be minimum wage in the world today. The way that it is, everybody does a background check and I learned that as well. So those were the challenges that I faced when I first got out. I remember being, um, I remember it being really difficult when, um, really difficult when I first got out, getting upset about things because I didn't know. I didn't know how to work a cell phone at all. And I didn't know all the, I didn't even know, this may sound, this may sound crazy, but I didn't even know how to pump gas. I was approaching society completely completely lost but everything had changed so much that it was all new to me it was an entirely new experience for me the, the, the important thing that you're giving us though jesse is so much is that you 
mastered it anyway. And we're, it's only been three years. And before we talk about what you're doing now and the responsibilities that you have, the amount of resources that other people have put you in charge of and in control of, um, it's all because of that you, you were able to overcome those challenges. And I want to comment a little bit about what I hear from you and what I experience that some of it is similar and some of it is different. Similar, I too had this challenge of being granted a release and then have it ripped away from me. It wasn't when I was in prison, it was when I was out. I finished after 26 years and then I had these, these periods of supervised release and after a year they told me I was free and then the next day they told me they'd made a mistake and they pulled it back and told me I had another 25 years or something of supervised release. I was able to overcome that but I, I think that when that happens to guys like you and me, Jesse, is if we've, made, if we've sown the seeds and invested in ourselves and changed our mindset, you know, they can pull away your prison term, but yet I, maybe it was a test for you that they were saying, yes. hey, let's do this and let's say if we pull it, does he revert to the type of behavior that shows he should be in prison or does he continue yes. on this path? And clearly you continued on that path and you got your parole. And, and so I really like to, I wanted to emphasize that point for people who are living in prison because the reality is prisons are designed to receive. They're not always encouraging of people who get out. And right. it takes a very strong mind and it takes stories like Jesse Barnes to help guys who are locked up see it because they I'm are, glad. What's that? Michael, I'm glad that you brought that up. Uh, you emphasize that because actually that's the moment there that I knew that there was truly a fundamental change because at that time they didn't tell me that they rescinded my decision and then they were going to give it back to me. Uh, they just said, yeah, we're basically, you're not going to make parole. And I still had several years, almost nine years left of my sentence to do. And in my mind, the first thing that came up was that old thinking that said, well, now you did all that for nothing. You've, you've, you've been, the school is going to be useless. All of this is going to be useless. That's the, the initial pattern of thought that, that I had. And um, ultimately, I told myself, no, it's not useless because I'm changed because I myself got this education for me. And it wasn't for just to get out in society. It was fundamentally for, for me. And to me, that was the, I think that was the challenge that told me that this is real. This is exactly, um, these changes are, are real. And it's not just for something else. It's, it's, uh, it's for me. It's a fundamental change. And at that point, if I would have stayed in prison, I still would have continued on the path, the, the path that I was on. I would have continued to go uh, try to get more education and just to do it the best that I could while in prison. Um, but I'm glad that you brought that up because that was a trying time for me. And that's it was what a I defining to, moment. It was a defining yeah. moment for me. That's what I try and do because I, there's nothing that anybody that's going in prison right now, I don't care if they're going in for a year or for a life. There's nothing that any of them are going through that I didn't go through that you didn't go through. And right. those people need to hear these stories about how we dealt with those complications. And there was yeah. certainly people look at my life right now and it's fundamentally different from what anybody would expect for a guy who did 26 calendar years in prison. Fundamentally different. But I can say you know, somebody could say, oh, he's lucky or he's this and that, but that's not accurate. It's because I started sowing seeds right. early on my sentence that made all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. And I changed the way that I thought. And by changing the right. way that I thought, new opportunities opened for me. And the deals I'm doing right now in society, were, I wasn't ready to do the day that I got out of prison. I mean, in the last, uh, you know, month, I've been putting together this new business and I've raised more than a million dollars. And... I'm building this business, and I'm, I don't say that to give myself a pat on the back, but who would have thought that was possible less than right. five years after getting out of prison? I want to show people it's possible for anybody, but it comes at the right time. I wasn't, when I got out of prison the first day, I too had to struggle to get a driver's license. I mean, funny thing, and I'll ask you if this happened to you, but I was 48 years old when I got out of, when I transitioned into a halfway house so that I could go get a driver's license. And I didn't even know how to drive anymore. I didn't even know that I didn't. Know how to drive. <laughs> you know, when I was in prison, I did, I assumed I'd come home and I'd know how to drive. I don't know when I forgot how to drive. All I know is that when I got behind the wheel of that car, I was scared to death and I didn't know how to operate a vehicle anymore, even though I, 
prison when I was 23. So I'd been driving for many years. And, and the funny thing for me, Jesse, probably didn't, I don't know if it happened to you, because, but, but for me, it took me longer to get comfortable as a driver the second time of learning than it did the first. <laughs> it, was so, it was so long for me, Michael, that I completely, I guess almost completely forgot how to drive. And that's another thing that's, I had to get over the humiliation. I had to get over all of that and yeah. just do it. Because here I had, I had my niece who was, I believe, 17 at the time. She was teaching her uncle how to drive. And she had just got her, I think she had just got her driver's license previous, that previous summer. And those are all of the things and experiences that I had to go through. But I like what you said about um, you have to prepare. It's, it's the preparation that matters. It's not a decision. Making the decision that I was going to do good when I got out in society was the starting point. It was the seed. But the thinking, the, the challenging the thinking, the previous thinking is something that I'd become accustomed to over the years while I was in prison, like to recognize that those thoughts, those self-defeating thoughts, I recognize that they're not reality. And when I got in, out in society, I could have easily said, listen, I know people, Michael, I'm sure you do too. And I'm sure our listeners know a lot as well. People who get, get out of prison and those decisions are enough to say, you know what? I'm never going to make it. They're never going to hire me. I'm not even, I, look at me, I have to learn to drive it in my late 30s or some like you could even be in your 40s. And, you know, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to resort to whatever it is, whatever means that I know, to either to earn an income or just to live life. And that's that, for me, it was a process of over the years, first of all, building something for myself and not wanting to let that all, the, all that time go to say, I'm not just going to squander everything, all the education, all of the decisions that I've walked away from fights, all of these things that I've done for myself, I'm not just going to release them and let them go uh, for because life gets hard out here or because it's difficult. And anything that our listeners will experience getting out of prison, I think I can say with confidence that I pr probably experienced it uh, from going to a prison at a very early age, maximum security prison, doing the majority of my life in prison getting out, not knowing t uh, society, not knowing technology, uh, all of the challenges that face somebody getting out of prison, especially somebody that went at a very young age and that got out and really had all of those difficulties to face. I, mean, I believe that, um, that I, I experienced those as well. And it is, it is possible to get, to get beyond those. You know what? You got behind them. I got beyond them. Back one more thing about driving. You were talking about your niece teaching you how to drive. I got to say, it was my <laughs> wife who taught me how to drive. I got married when I was in prison. She was with me for my last ten years, and you know I was the luckiest guy in the world to find find her while I was still in prison. We've been married now for what six, sixteen, fifteen or sixteen years, I guess. Congratulations! Yeah, it's super awesome. But it was all part of a plan, Jesse, and it right. was part of a plan that got me through this journey. But I still remember her teaching me how to drive, and I was like that Mr. Magoo driver, you know, just <laughs> gripping the steering wheel like I, I was going to go and, and going slow. And she'd tell me, honey, it's just as dangerous to go too slow as to fast. I don't care. I'm not, I can't do this. You know, and I had to learn. I felt like such a pussy trying to learn. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, dude, then now, you know, I'm driving and I'm now, you know, it's a man and a woman and she's driving. I said, like, come on, get it together, you know, <laughs> changes in life. And, you know, but the, the more we prepare ourselves, the more we can overcome them. And the more we hear stories like yours, Jesse, the more we start to believe or get other people to believe that they can do it too. And you, you described a lot of challenges coming out, but you eventually did get that first job and transition into different jobs. You said you started at minimum wage. Walk us through a little bit about how you got credit, how you got into a better job, how you, you know, got through these first three years. Well, the, the thing about it with me, and I think it would be with most people, is you, I had to swallow my pride and just do whatever it takes to earn a living and realize that this, Society, as much as, regardless of my views of it, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't owe me anything. And I think that's the main thing with me, the, the story that I, 
that I tell, the narrative that I tell myself. And I had to get over that, that, that it doesn't matter. This is the way society is. And, and I have to, uh, whatever job that's available, I take it and I have to earn it. People, especially with, with uh, somebody with a violent charge, they're not, they're very reluctant to hire somebody, even if you have references, even if you have a good, a great work ethic, because you're a liability to them. And um, what I had to do is I had to show people just through hard work. And it is possible. There are people that will take chances. And that's the thing that's different, Mike, that I didn't know that surprised me when I got out of prison. I viewed the world as hostile. I viewed because that was the view when I went in. And I got out and I thought that everything's going to be against me. It's going to be hostile. Nobody's going to want to hire me. Nobody's going to want to do this. And to a large degree, that is true. But there's always going to be somebody who will take a chance. It's been my experience anyway, that will take a chance. And that's what it was for me. There was a guy that my brother knew and said, um, he told him my story completely. It was totally, I've always been honest with my employers because I don't want to, first, I have such a big gap in my life that I pretty much have to be. But even if I didn't, I want to be upfront with them. And I want them to know my entire background. I don't want any surprises. And um, that's hindered me from getting, I guess, from getting a lot of jobs. But there was a guy that took a chance with me. And um, he, was, he worked in the oil field. And in fact, I had to move. Um, I had to move up route from where I was in Texas to North Dakota by myself. And at this time, I'd only been out, I guess, six months or so and learned a completely new industry that I knew nothing about. I mean, I didn't know the basic stuff that men know with mechanics because I'd been in prison my entire life. So I had all of those challenges, but um, I uprooted in this really hostile place, North Dakota. And I went to work there by myself, living on my own, completely on my own, a very scary concept. But uh, I got through it and it built my, my confidence. It's really what I needed. And there was a guy that took a chance on me, an employer, and he knew my background and he said, look, I'm going to give you a shot. And um, I was determined to, to earn it. And um, since then, I've, I've progressed. Now I'm a crew lead. Uh, I work in the oil field, and I'm a crew lead now with re pretty good responsibilities. And I've um, managed to work my way up in a pretty good income. And to me, it just uh, it, it humbles me, really. Well, I don't want to humble you. You've got to inspire people, bro. You are exactly what everybody who comes out of prison wants to be, somebody who has been able to eat the, 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 the challenges that, that we face when we come out of prison and yet grow through it. There's a, there's a funny analogy I use or I like to use with people, and I'm going to try it with you. So, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that I'm speaking with you five years ago, six years ago, when you're coming to the end of your journey, Jesse. And I'll ask okay. you, okay? okay? Let's start right here. If, uh, Jesse, <clears throat> let's talk about planting a tree. You can see this tree right now, but let's reverse engineer it. How did we plant that tree? What would have been the first step that we had to take when we were planting that tree? To plant the seed. Okay, great. Is that all we have to do is plant the seed and then walk away? Or is there anything else we have to do? Just talk a bit. So just think you planted the seed. Can you just walk away and let the tree grow? Or does something else have to happen? You have to water it constantly. You have to do anything else? Uh, put in, I guess, the good soil and water it. Good soil. Sun. How about fertilizer? We have to do any of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. you got to fertilize it. You got to fertilize it, right? So we don't just plant the seed. We got to water it. We got to fertilize it. Is that right? That's right. Okay. So what is fertilizer, Jesse? What is your understanding of what fertilizer is? This isn't a science question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to put you on the spot yeah. here. But if I were to ask you, what do you think fertilizer is? Do you have any idea, yes or no? Yes. What do you think it is? It's um, a substance that helps the, the, do you think the plants. It's, have you ever heard that fertilizer is like manure? Yes. <laughs> okay. So let's just think that we're the people listening to our program are all grown-ups. And so another word for manure is shit. Right. <laughs> okay. So we got a seed. Okay. You got to plow it through there. You got to spread some shit over it. But before that seed turns into the tree, it's got to grow through a lot of what? 
a What's lot of shit. Crook? It's got to go through a lot of shit until right. it turns into a tree, Jesse. So yeah, <laughs> going through prison might be planting the seed the way we've changed our life, but that seed isn't going to do it by itself. You got to still right. nurture it and fertilize it, and it's got to grow through all of that struggle and difficulty so that roots are growing underneath the surface and spreading out, and we're becoming stronger. And as we become stronger, we become a tree that nothing can knock down. And that's what you've become. And that's what we want to show other guys in prison, how, what they should be doing is preparing for success, but understanding just like it didn't happen for Jesse just like it didn't happen for me. You got to grow through this struggle. You got to take it. You got to realize people are going to throw shit on us, but never is anything going to derail us. We know that we've got to live in the world as it exists, not as we want it to be. We would That's right. be able to say, oh, I've paid my debt to society. Everything's going to be awesome. There is no problem. I'm going to have you know, the uh, world's going to welcome me with open arms. That's not accurate. And that's not our job. Our job is not to tell people it's easy. Our people, our job is to tell people, get ready, go through the right. show, succeed anyway, make it happen. Don't be a pussy. Right. Be successful. Right. That's what the reality, it, that's what I try to live and show every day. And that's why I ask guys like you to come on our show, communicate that message because it is our show we don't need to get paid for this we don't need to do anything we need to show other people hey there's a reason that you've got to stick with the program there is a reason you've got to reject the criminal lifestyle there's a reason you've got to move away from people because that's how you're going to persuade these other people to give you a shot and give you a job and let you move beyond the minimum wage and into success and I know that's what you've done now so walk us through like what are you doing today what is your job you know, tell us what you're responsible for and what this person who gave you an opportunity, what he has trusted you with. What are you doing? What's your job now? Okay, I'm a, the oil field has a lot of, there's a lot of different components to it, a lot of different companies doing a lot of different things. Um, with me, I, it's basically flowback and we're, we're, um, we work alongside right after the drillers come in. And with, with my responsibility, what I do is, I'm um, in charge of the crews that come with with our company that come here and um, basically do whatever we do. Um, we clean out the wells, basically. So you clean out wells, and is that a, a what does your work schedule look like? Is that a, a, a nine well, to five job? And, and you go yeah, no, <laughs> uh, I wish <laughs> no. In the oil field, uh, yeah, actually, we're we're responsible for giving the oil companies for letting them know. What, what their wells are going to be producing is actually, we're called well testers is the actual name for it. And uh, we, let, we, we let the companies know, okay, your well, this is, we clean it out first, meaning we get the sand out, all the plug parts from the drilling process and all of that. And then we tell them, this, there's a lot of math involved. We tell them, this is what your, your well is going to be producing. This is what it's been producing. And we're uh, in charge of like the flow, how, how much gas, oil, and water come out of, come out of the ground. And, uh, are you are you at liberty to tell us how much you earn for doing this job? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm up to six figures now. Can you tell us what what does that mean? Because a lot of guys are in prison, right? They don't get yeah. that. What does that mean? What are you earning a month? Um, I earn my my paychecks generally now are after taxes and everything are almost five grand uh, five? every two weeks. Every, every two, two weeks, weeks you get you get like five grand. Yeah, every two, about 4,700 actually. So I want, I want people in prison to grasp that. We're talking to a guy that did 21 years, yeah. convicted of first degree murder, had a 30 year sentence in maximum security prisons. He's been out for three years and now he's earning every two weeks almost $5,000. Yeah. Remember that if, when you're struggling for commissary money. Right. If anybody yeah. believes, if anybody ever tells our listeners, or they, if they believe that because they were convicted or because they've been to prison, that they will not be able to earn a livable wage, that it is absolutely wrong. It is going to be harder, for sure. It will be harder, but it is possible to do that. I have, I've, I'm doing it myself, and it's just... Um, to, to me, it's it's uh, it's just it's possible, absolutely possible to do. 
it's possible if you do what Jesse did, if you change the way you think, if you say, I want to be a successful dude, I don't want to be a guy that's always living on the margins, I'm always struggling, I'm always, you got to think, what can I do? Because I guarantee you, I mean, we, we told Jesse's story that it would be absurd for me to think I could really tell Jesse's story in two episodes of 30 minutes each. This is a man who's transformed his life, his thinking, and I, and I have no doubt that psychologists could write volumes about how he did it. But, you know, we're just here to give you the bullet point surface. Here's the bullet point surface. Jesse changed his thinking patterns. Jesse read different books. Jesse started to believe that he could do more than what other people in prison and judges were telling him that he was incorrigible, that he believed that I want something more, and then he went after it. And he made a 100% commitment to making that change, just like he made a 100% commitment to be a man of violence and to be a shot caller when he was young. He made a new 100% commitment and said, I'm going to be successful. He didn't expect somebody else to hand it to him, and when people took it away, he stuck with it. And because he wanted to control his own destiny. And that's what Jesse's doing right now. And it's what you can be doing regardless if you're going into jail for a year or for a life term. You've got the power to decide how you're going to respond to it. That's what I've learned from Jesse. That's why I am inspired and so grateful to him for a guy who's out there building real value for his customers, for his employers. He's taken the time to say, no, I want to share this with my brothers in prison. That is super awesome. That's what makes him a servant leader. That's what makes him an inspiration to me. And I'm just so grateful to you, Jesse, for taking Thank the you. time to share your story. And I'm going to give you, you know, the last word here. We've come to the end of our episode, second episode. You know, maybe you have some words of wisdom. I, that do. maybe I didn't fully capture the recap of what uh, an amazing guy you are. But uh, I'd love it if you just, you know, took a minute or two or three and, and give us the final word to somebody who's either going into prison with a lengthy term or is locked up and is a member of a gang or doesn't know how to break free of a gang or, or reject that, yeah. that, that, that thinking that leads to failure in prison. Give us some last words of wisdom to those dudes for us, if you could. Okay. Um, what I, for me, what would help me the most is – I want you to know, to believe firmly, first, that, that there is another life and it is available out there. And it's the story that you tell yourself, that I told myself. It's, if I told myself that, it was, that I was not capable of going any other direction, whether I was involved in a gang or not, and I was, by the way, I didn't get into that, but it's very, very difficult uh, in, your, in my thinking to believe that that there's any other way, but there is another way. And it has to start with the determination to believe that there's, there's something better for you. And I don't care who you are in prison, but you are worth more than living like an animal inside of a cage. And you can contribute to society when you get out. It is possible. It's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. If you believe that it will be easy, then you're in for extremely rude awakening. It won't be easy, but it's absolutely possible. And life on the outside will continue. It will be whatever you make it, whatever you determine it to be. And what Michael said about choosing your response is the single most thing that I've learned that has probably left the deepest impact and revolutionized my life and my thinking. It's the fact that I have the ability to respond. I, I can't change my environment. When I was in prison, I couldn't get out of prison. I'd be shot in the back if I tried to get out of prison. I could not get out of prison. And to this to this day, I'm determined, um, I'm still on parole. So they determine a lot of my environment, a lot of things. Some employers determine my environment. But at the end of the day, it is my response. I still can choose how I'm going to respond to the way my environment is, whether it's in prison, whether it's out of prison. And to me, that's liberating. That's, that's, that's true freedom to me and to realize that. But what I'd like to say to them, it is possible. Hold on. Start making those decisions now while you're in prison. That's what gave me the foundation is I believe I started reading the books. Okay, if you go to try to get an education, you get rejected because they don't have funding, then do it yourself. You know, make the effort. Be proactive. And it will pay off. It won't be easy, but it will. And there's, a, there's an awesome life waiting out, out in society. You can, and that's what I'd want them to say. It is possible. I did it, and you can too.
you absolutely did it. And now you are going to be reaching more than 100,000 people in jails and prisons across the United States. I'm so grateful to you, Jesse. And I know that the, our listeners are grateful to you because you're exactly what they need. You are that light that came through the window that you saw back then when you were locked inside of a segregated housing unit cell. And you are the change that we want to see in the world. And I'm just so grateful to you for taking the time to share your inspiring story with our audience. I wish you continuing success. Don't be surprised if I reach out to you for a follow-up in a couple of months. <laughs> anytime, Michael, anytime. I love Thank telling you. the story of guys like you. You're the guy that would have inspired me when I was locked up. As a young man, I would have sort of said, man, I want to be like Jesse when I get out. I want to make some money. I want to have a great life. I want to be successful. And I want to thank you for sharing your story with prison professors. On behalf of my two partners, Jessica Paperni and Sean Hopwood, we encourage you to stick with our program. Visit prisonprofessors.com to learn more about guys like Jesse and people who've made changes inside and became successful. We'll be back tomorrow with another inspiring episode. Thank you.